welcome to our Sunday Online. It's great that you've joined us. I'm James, got the privilege of leading us through this morning. If you're new and here for the first time, it's great to have you with us. So glad that you have joined us. If you want to find out more about us as a church or about Jesus and the Christian faith, there's some info at the end of the video you can use to get in touch with us. We'd love to hear from you personally. In a moment, Joy's going to lead us in worship. And then Jamie Lottinger from Kings in Norwich is going to be preaching to us. I'll introduce Jamie and Beth to us a bit more later on. To, let me just tell us some of the things that are coming up in church family life. Uh, the week of the 15th of March is a big week for us. We're going to have a week of prayer. We're going to be praying into our mission together as a church here in Beckles and beyond. Uh, prayer is combat. And in these uh, testing days, it can be a real challenge to get up the energy to pray. Uh, Mike Betts helpfully writes in his book, um, The Prayers of Many, which I can highly recommend. He says this, Praying together enables us to press in by faith to the throne of God, even when we feel tired, weak and out of sorts. We carry one another in. The good news is that when it comes to praying, we're not called to battle alone, but we're called to pray together, to take up arms together, to make gospel advance. So join us as we pray together during that week. Just let me give us an idea of what that's going to look like. Every uh, weekday during that week, Monday to Friday, there'll be a, a short burst of prayer from 11 till 11.30. We're going to have our usual monthly Wednesday evening prayer meeting from 7.30 to 8.30 p.m. And on Friday, we're going to have a bit of a special joining with other churches across Relation Mission, family of churches in Norfolk and North Suffolk, praying together to first the strengthening of our local churches, praying for each other. We're going to be praying for our mission here in the UK in Norfolk and North Suffolk and beyond. We're also on mainland Europe in Serbia, Czech Republic. Um, we'll be praying for a mission in Kenya as well. So do join us uh, for that. And then on Sunday, after next week's Sunday Online, we'll meet from 11.30 till 12. And we'll follow that up after lunchtime and finish the week off with some Everyone A Witness Wonders training. We've been talking about how, how we witness in words, works and wonders. And there's some specific training here for witnessing in wonders. We've only got to look at the Gospels and the book of Acts that we're preaching through at the moment to see that signs and wonders were just a normal part of the early church's uh, witness. Everywhere Jesus went, he healed the sick and performed signs and wonders. And in the book of Acts, we see the disciples do exactly the same. And this uh, training event will provide opportunity for us to connect with people across the relational mission, family of churches in Norfolk and North Suffolk receive teaching on witnessing in wonders and use our stay local daily exercise as it were as an opportunity to walk and pray and to put into action the things that we're learning before coming back and sharing with one another. All of the info for the week of prayer including um, the Friday night prayer meeting and the Sunday afternoon everyone a witness training is all in e-news and everything you need including uh, registering and booking in uh, for the Friday and Sunday event are all in there so do have a look at that. Uh, just a note for your diary April's prayer meeting is going to be a church family meeting where we'll be getting together to hear God um, together as a church and be encouraged as we journey on in mission and all that God has for us. We've invited Toby and Clive who are well known to us and providing much valued apostolic input We've also invited Marcus Tutt and Mike Bollinger. Marcus is from Kings, he's one of the elders there. Mike's an elder at Lowestoft Community Church. We've invited them to bring some uh, prophetic input and ministry to us that evening. If you call New Life your home, please put the date in your diary and come expectant for God to speak. One final thing, um, Heather has kindly put together another video resource for parents to use in discipling their children at home. Um, children who are God's own age, so do have a look for that in E! News too. And other than that, let me uh, prepare us for worship and encourage us to worship God together now. Colossians 2 verse 13 says that we were dead in our trespasses, that 
really we had no hope in life. Um, there was nothing about us to initiate God's love, nothing in us that would have sparked his interest, none, nothing in us that could have got us out of the situation that, we got, that our sin had got us into. Um, but it says that God has made us alive together with him, having forgiven us all our trespasses. That our sin, our trespasses, the things we've done wrong, um, were nailed to the cross when Jesus Christ died on the cross for us in our place. And when he rose again from the dead, we were made alive together with him, if we trust him and uh, give him our lives. And so uh, we can celebrate that now and rejoice in it, that we're no longer dead in our trespasses, but alive together with Christ. And rejoice in the forgiveness that we've received. Let's worship. Hello church family, it's lovely to be able to worship our Lord and Saviour together and let's do that by blessing his holy name. Uh, we come and worship Jesus together.
crossed my mind to Calvary, where Jesus bled and died for me. I see his wounds, his hands, his feet, my Savior on that cursed tree. Worship you. I worship you. 
Just wanted to take a moment to introduce Jamie and Beth Lottinger to us. Such a shame that in these days we're not meeting in person. I'd love to have introduced them to us as a church family yeah, in person, face to face. They're a great couple. They're good fun. Uh, and I trust they'll do us good this morning as Beth brings a reading and Jamie preaches for us. want to commend them to us and just say, encourage us to be open to hearing from God through what Jamie's got to bring to us this morning. Hello, good morning. My name's Beth. My husband Jamie is preaching to you in a little bit um, and I have the pleasure of reading the passage that he will be preaching to you from. Um, I'm just going to pray first and then we'll read the passage. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for, for church. Um, thank you that we can meet online at the moment. Thank you that the church is very much alive, um, even in a pandemic. Father God, we thank you your word bears fruit. And I pray that as we read your word and explore it together this morning, that much fruit would come from it in our lives. Father, be with us, open our hearts and our minds to what you have to say to us. And may we be changed as a result of meeting with you this morning. Amen. Okay, the passage is Acts 17, verses 1 to 15. By all means, follow along with your Bible um, or listen as I read it. Now, 
When they had passed the Amphipoli and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where there was a synagogue of the Jews. And Paul went in, as was his custom. And on three Sabbath days he reasoned with them from the scriptures, explaining and proving that it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead, and saying, This Jesus, whom I proclaim to you, is the Christ. And some of them were persuaded and joined Paul and Silas, as did a great many of the devout Greeks, and not a few of the leading women. But the Jews were jealous, and taking some wicked men of the rabble, they formed a mob, set the city in an uproar, and attacked the house of Jason, seeking to bring them out to the crowd. And when they could not find them, they dragged Jason and some of the brothers before the city authorities, shouting, These men who have turned the world upside down have come here also, and Jason has received them. And they are all acting against the decrees of Caesar, saying that there is another king, Jesus. And the people and the city authorities were disturbed when they heard these things. And when they had taken money as security from Jason and the rest, they let them go. The brothers immediately sent Paul and Silas away by night to Berea. And when they arrived, they went into the Jewish synagogue. Now, these Jews were more noble than those in Thessalonica. They received the word with all eagerness, examining the scriptures daily to see if these things were so. Many of them therefore believed, with not a few Greek women of high standing as well as men. But when the Jews from Thessalonica learnt that the word of God was proclaimed by Paul at Berea also, they came there too, agitating and stirring up the crowds. Then the brothers immediately sent Paul off on his way to the sea, but Silas and Timothy remained there. Those who conducted Paul brought him as far as Athens, and after receiving a com command for Silas and Timothy to come to him as soon as possible, they departed. Hi New Life Church, my name's Jamie and it is a pleasure to be with you today. Um, so I am a part of King's Community Church in Norwich. I've known James since we were at university. Uh, he's a couple of years younger than me, it might not look like it, but um, that is in fact true. Uh, we've been friends for quite a number of years and part of King's Community Church in Norwich for quite a number of years too. Uh, you, you probably just met my wife Beth doing the Bible reading. Um, she actually she has also been friends with James but she's actually also known um, James's wife Jess since they were about three years old I believe. Um, I've just been regaled with tales of how they used to build mud pies in each other's back gardens when they were little. They both went to the same church growing up in Cambridgeshire. So yeah, there's some really nice connection there. And as I say, it's a it's a privilege to be invited to, to speak to you today. So we're gonna look at these verses from Acts 17. And we can see something amazing and something difficult happening and that is the advance of God's mission the advance of Jesus's kingdom happening and what we see is that there's there are good results from that and also um, difficulties that that arise from that as well and so there's three key things that I want for us to look at this morning that's the, the pattern of Jesus's kingly advance, the advance of his kingdom. So the pattern of it, the power of it, and then how we persevere as we partake in it. OK, so first of all, in these verses, we see the pattern. What tends to happen when the mission of God goes forth when King Jesus advances and we see in verse 2 it says Paul went that's the first thing P 
people go like Paul. Paul went into the synagogue. So he he reasoned, he explained, uh, he persuaded, he proved um, from scripture, from his own experience, who Jesus was, the Christ, the chosen of God, sent to rescue the world. And he um so he he went and shared that that message but seeing how the pattern of how it progressed from from there we see verse 4 some were persuaded uh that's in Thessalonica and then later on in in Berea Verses 11 and 12, there in Berea, they received the message with great eagerness. And it says in verse 12 that many believed. So we have this wonderful effect of of Paul and Silas and Timothy going and explaining and, and persuading who Jesus is, what he's accomplished. Salvation comes to people they are rescued from Satan, sin and death. God's kingdom comes. But that's not the only thing that results. We see in verse five, it says uh, in Thessalonica, as well as some being saved, some instead formed a mob. They were angry, jealous, formed a mob and started a riot. In Berea, verse eight as well as people being saved, we see there that others were, it says, disturbed in the ESV. In other translations, it says thrown into turmoil. Um, in the NIV, it says they were upset. So when the gospel goes out and is shared effectively in the power of God, in the power of King Jesus, we get this pattern. Some are saved, some are upset, some are rescued, some res some revolt, uh, some are redeemed and some riot. This is what happens when when the kingdom advances. Uh, how does how does this affect us? Well, I think the first thing is that. If we were guaranteed a favourable response, if we knew that whenever we shared the good news about Jesus and who he is, what he's accomplished, if we knew that people would turn to him with joy and they'd be so thankful to us without fail, I think we'd share the gospel every day. And I think we'd probably share the gospel with most people we met who who don't know Jesus yet. The fact is, we know that we're not always welcomed. We can be rejected. We can upset people if we talk about Jesus. If we share the treasure that we have found in him. So do we do we just then say okay this is this is hard um we've seen more difficulty than we have salvation um so let's be reserved about it obviously we don't but what we need to understand is that this diversity of responses is entirely what we should expect given the situation the situation that's still true today think of the big picture big picture it anchors us it helps us to to find our way and the big picture here is that we humans were created yes for relationship with god but also to rule the earth to extend his image across the earth, to fill the earth and subdue it, to rule it in, in God's image, 
in his in it with his good rule his wise rule that the earth would flourish and that his glory the glory of god would would be across the entire earth god didn't just make us to rule over us he made us to rule through us to involve us in that rule but we know any of us who have read Genesis chapters one to three, we know that we gave away that rule. Instead of subduing the earth, we submitted ourselves to Satan, to the serpent. And ever since then, there's been a degree to which Satan sin and death have had an influence and a rule in the earth and it's obviously not ultimate rule god still has ultimate rule over all but because he gave us authority and then we gave that authority away to another we've got this problem and it means that jesus had to come to invade enemy territory, to win the world back, to, to rescue us from sin, from death, from the rule of Satan, which just brings destruction in our lives and throughout the world, as we see every day. Jesus came, invaded enemy territory, and he has formed a church, his people, his bride. Yes, so that we can have relationship with him, restored once again and enjoy that. But so that we can carry on the mission and extend his good, wise rule throughout the earth. Again, that, that God's glory would be spread throughout the earth. Jesus, it says in Revelation, makes all things new. He's, we know he's bringing about a new creation. But he does that by invading enemy territory and winning back, taking back what was lost at the, at, in the fall. And so it should be no surprise at all that when the gospel is effectively proclaimed, when Jesus extends his, his, his message in power through his people, we should expect there to be salvation and we should expect there to be kickback. We should expect there to be redemption, people being won back to God and renewal, people being renewed, made new, because Jesus is bringing a new creation. And we should also expect riots, because the, the enemy and people who just want to stay as they are and stay under um, the, the rule of, of what Ephesians refers to as the prince of the power of the air, uh, it says he, he, he rules in the, in, in the sons and daughters of disobedience. Um, there's going to be there's going to be uh, resistance there. We should expect it. We shouldn't fear it. Um, we should accept it as part of what it looks like for for the mission of God to go forwards and Jesus's kingdom to be extended. So that's the pattern of. King Jesus's advance and as a result the Paul and Timothy and Silas they're accused of turning the world upside down that's what happens when we go and when we speak this message it, it turns the world upside down Jesus is bringing about this new creation the old goes the new comes the world turns upside down but I want to just talk now about the power of the king's advance you see the very complaint that is brought against paul and silas and timothy is their very power and it is our very power today the complaint against them in verse 7 is 
They are saying there is another king, one called Jesus. They're not accepting Caesar as king. They're not accepting the status quo. In 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 in, in our day now, okay, we don't have a Caesar and we don't really take our monarchy to to rule in the same way as in days past. But we know people are ruled by other powers, whether it's lust, whether it's greed, um, whether whether it's um, money, whether it's um, yeah, it, it can be it can be so many things. We we see the destruction that is wrought in the world as people are ruled by by other powers, and and we come along saying, no, that's not the ultimate power that's not the ultimate authority that's that shouldn't be king of your life there's another king king jesus and actually that's our very power we carry the king's message in the king's authority backed up by the king's power the more we grasp that the more we will be emboldened in our mission. But maybe wielding power and authority can feel a bit awkward for you. Maybe um, the threat of rejection, of awkwardness, of uh, people getting upset, Maybe, you know, maybe that makes it difficult for you to to, to, to be confident in, in, in that kingly power that backs you up. It, I, I can be like that sometimes. I, I definitely can uh, sometimes be reticent to to share boldly what I've experienced, what I've seen of Jesus in Scripture and my own experience. It makes me think of when I became a teacher. When I when I first became a teacher, I'd been a philosophy student. I thought to myself, you know, what right do I have to tell these kids what to do? Why should they listen to me? Especially when their inclination is to not listen to me. In the same way that many people, you know, you might second guess that people might not be inclined to listen to you if you share the message of of Jesus the thing i had to realize becoming a teacher is is that really i needed to understand that yes i was backed by a higher power by the by the head teacher by the senior leadership team yes i had their backing that was important to realise. But actually, I needed to come to, to see myself as being part of a, of a bigger authority structure. I had to come to see myself as an expression of a greater power. I was an expression of the, of, of, of the, of the head teacher, of the leadership team of, of Sir John Lehman High School. I was an expression... Of, of the authority even that backs them up, that is behind them, even up to the government of the United Kingdom. When I saw myself as being part of and wrapped up in a bigger authority, a bigger power, it suddenly became a lot easier for me to speak as though I had authority and to be bolder in telling kids what to do, even if they weren't inclined to listen to me. In a similar way, we need to realise it's not just little old me sharing about Jesus. It's not just little old you sharing about Jesus. You are in Christ. You are endowed with the King's message, clothed in the King's power. It's not just your say so, it's his and it's not just your ability to talk. It is his enabling, his empowering, his authority that he's given you, that you go in. We see every time Jesus sends people out, 
in the Gospels. He makes it clear to them, you've got authority for this. We see in Luke 9 verses 1 to 2, it says, when Jesus had called the 12 together, he gave them power and authority to drive out demons, to cure diseases, and he sent them to proclaim the kingdom of God. You walk in the king's power. Walk close to King Jesus and you will see his power extended as you, and as you faithfully talk and share of who he is and what you've seen of him. His power, he will use you, he will back you with his power and you will see situations and people change there will be redemption there will be salvation and yes there may be a riot <laughs> there may be um some some kickback as well and that's okay and that is okay my last point that that i want to to make is that I've I've already alluded to it in the last point. This is Jesus's work. This is something Jesus is doing and we join in and we persevere. Jesus is drawing all people to himself. And if we're going to be part of drawing people to Jesus, we need to make sure that to persevere in this mission, to persevere in this kingly advance this advancing kingdom of Jesus to persevere in it we need to go on being drawn to him ourselves we need to to go on being captured by his beauty and his goodness his grace um I just want to share with you a quote from from Bruce Milne He says, here is the supreme vindication, the endless attraction of the Christian faith, not the church, which is sadly regularly disappointing, but Christ himself, another king, one called Jesus, who is fulfilling his own promise. When I am lifted up. I will draw all people to myself. It was true in the days of his earthly ministry, as Don Everts movingly records. There was just something so clear and beautiful and true and unique and powerful about Jesus that old rabbis would marvel at his teaching. Young children would run and sit in his lap. Ashamed prostitutes would find themselves weeping at his feet and whole villages would gather to hear him speak. Experts in the law would find themselves speechless and people from the poor to the rugged working class to the unbelievably wealthy would leave everything and follow him. They were doing it in Thessalonica and they will do it still today as King Jesus continues to draw the multitudes and expand his kingdom. We are confident in Jesus for those for those reasons. It's what he's what he's doing. And as we feed on that confidence, as we worship him, as we see him and savor him and go on being drawn to him ourselves, so will we go on persevering in in this mission. Paul says in Thessalonians that, um, let me just find it one second. Yeah, here we are. So Paul, Paul says in Thessalonians that, you know, bear in mind he'd been in Philippi, he'd suffered in, in, in Philippi where he'd been beaten and imprisoned. He says, though we had already suffered, we had boldness in our God to declare to you the gospel in the midst of much conflict. He was bold in God. I put it to you for many, many reasons, but because he was seeing and savouring Jesus 
his heart was captured by Jesus and that was not waxing or waning in the light of suffering. Not at all. John Piper says. Hang on, wrong piece of paper. <laughs> Sorry, the, the, the downside of having many pages of notes. Um, John Piper says you cannot commend what you don't cherish. You can't proclaim what you don't prize. Worship is the fuel of mission. And so if we are to go on. And even in the light of sometimes negative reactions, we must be captured up into this big picture of what Jesus is doing that I've talked about. And more than that, to cherish him, to prize him. The more we do that, the more we prize, the more we proclaim, the more we cherish, the more we proclaim. I was struck this week by Psalm 107. I just came across it as, as just part of, of not as part of preparing this preach at all. It was just part of my, my daily devotion. And, and it said this and it really speaks into this final point. David says, my heart is confident, God. I will sing. I will sing praises with the whole of my being. It says a couple of verses later, I will praise you, Lord, among the peoples, perhaps his own people. But then he says, I will sing praises to you among the nations, among those beyond my own people, among those who don't yet know you. Out of this heart of confidence in God and wanting to sing praises to God with his whole being, it's not enough for him to just proclaim it to his own people, to sing praises among his own people. That heart of worship want, it sends him to the nations. He wants to proclaim it and sing it to the nations. Why? For your faithful love is higher than the heavens and your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. God, be exalted above the heavens. Let your glory be over the whole earth. Save with your right hand and answer me so that those you love may be rescued. That is the heart of God to rescue those he loves. And as we as we see him, savour him, worship him, we are able to persevere in this mission with this same heart to see God save, to see God's glory be extended across the whole earth. His faithful love is higher than the heavens. It impacts David so deeply that he can't keep it to himself. I hope that encourages you. Let me pray for us. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you are king reigning over all. Jesus, you are another king, a better king, and you are invading enemy territory in our day to win people back, to win the world back to your good and loving rule so that your glory may be across the earth. Thank you that you're making all things new. I pray you would encourage us and embolden us in that vision. Clothe us in your power. Enable us to speak and enable us to joyfully accept um, all the results of that. The salvation and the upset, the redemption and the riots. Help us to embrace you in it all and be encouraged to persevere as we go on seeing you and savouring you and being drawn to you just as you are drawn as just as you are drawing many others to yourself in beckles and beyond in this day thank you jesus amen it's been a privilege speaking to you i hope that's um helped you amen